Hey guys, hope you're doing good. Welcome to my Witcher Season 2 review. Uh, it's finally arrived, it's been a couple of years. I mean, COVID has slowed it down for sure. <laughs> uh, me and my wife uh, thoroughly enjoyed the first season and we're just counting down the days until the next one. She was seeing like posts and teases on Facebook for it and it was just like, oh, when's it gonna arrive? And then finally around the Christmas holidays, it popped up. Uh, it took us a little longer than expected to get through it, but here we are. Um, I haven't played any of the games or read any of the books, so a very novice fan here. I have number three Wild Hunt um, downloaded on my PS4, but it's just finding the time to play it. I've heard it's like just the campaign is around 50 hours, and if you want to play it to full completion 100%, which I usually like doing, it's about 170. So yeah, I'm going to have to set a chunk of time <laughs> each week uh, getting into that because that could take some time. I should also note that this is a spoiler filled review so if you don't want to hear any spoilers back away now or if you don't care fine then let's get into it. So yeah we really enjoyed season one. Um, the only downside to it really was it was just a bit confusing there was a lot of time jumps going on but Henry Cavill had it down as, a, as the Witcher he was like amazing. Yennefer's story I thought was really really good I really enjoyed that her growth how she was just from the bottom, bottom of the barrel all the way to uh, becoming this um, really powerful sorceress that just stops an entire army in this fierce battle. So a really nice arc for her in that season. And it was just nice going through the little different uh, adventures. Like it was a sort of a singular story per episode with an overarching um, main story in the background. And I thought that really worked in the show's favour and just getting to know each of the characters a bit. The only one that really didn't feel like you got to know much of was Siri. She was pretty much in the background and you did not really care what happened with her. Um, but they sure more than made up for it in this season. So what did I think about the show overall? If I could sum it up in one word, it was decent. Um, nowhere near as good as season one. Um, I could easily say the best thing about this show and the worst thing about this show in both seasons one and two. The best thing about the show is Henry Cavill himself as the Witcher. I just love the character so much. He plays it down to a T. Every time he's in the scene, I just love it. And he's just, he grabs your attention instantly. His big broodiness and badassery is just something that really stands out more than anything else. And I just cannot get enough of him throughout this entire show. Which brings me to... The worst thing about the show which is there's not enough witcher in it <laughs> um there's so many different like storylines of things going on that diverts your attention that i don't think the witcher himself gets enough attention and i feel like he could be more of the center of his own show more than anyone else or anything that's going on in around the world we should be following him more than anyone i mean i want to see more of what he's about like what drives him, his ambitions. Maybe we could see more, like, see some flashbacks of him, like of him as a kid, see what he was like being brought up and being trained and see the Witcher fortress in a younger state, just seeing how they um, brought the Witcher character Geralt to be the man that he is now. I mean, what does he want? What is he striving for? I mean, all we know really at this point is just he wants to protect Siri. that's it and I feel like we could add a bit more like a few more layers to his character there's a bit more with him like when they visited the um Witcher Fortress sorry I forgot the name of it and getting to know his relationships with the different um witches and that and uh he had a little bond with one called Eskel which apparently is a fan favorite in the books um but yeah, I'd like to see a bit more of what um, Witcher is. I mean, we in season one, it felt like it was more the Yennefer show. Um, it wasn't terrible like for that. I mean, she had a great arc. I loved her story in that and what she went through. And then this series is more about Ciri, which was like a bit of a downfall of the last series, uh, series that we didn't see more of her. And boy, we <laughs> got to see a lot more Ciri in this one. It was literally the series show here. And that's what makes it more of a shame that we don't get to see like the Witcher in a more prominent spot. Because what we've seen of like Yennefer in the last series and 
Siri in this one, they do really good with their arcs, and I like, like, I enjoy their characters and what they're doing. So imagine if they just made Geralt himself the focus of that, and just have a more like role that made him just like, holy shit, I thought I liked him before, but now, Jesus, the stuff he went through. <laughs> I mean, it's not like he wasn't completely shone away. He's fought plenty of monsters. I think there was like five monsters in this series, I think. And then he also fought like some goons as well. He was speaking with Yennefer's old boyfriend, um, like just trying to suss down what's going on with these obelisks. And, you know, going from place to place, following Siri and Yennefer where they teleported to. So, you know, he was bobbing around, <laughs> you know. But I think The Witcher lessened in this series than they did in the first one. Because I think what made the show's strength in the first series, what made it, like, in its element, was having more individual stories per episode. Having a different, like, new story and new monster. I mean, because it was in different time elements going back and forth throughout the first series, that actually went in its favour because we were doing different things each episode and seeing how Geralt thrived in those different um, elements. And I feel like that was the sort of thing they should have done here. In the first series, it was like multiple singular stories with an overarching arc behind it. This time it felt in series two, it was more the other way around. We're following the main story and there might be some subplots coming out of that. And I feel like that sort of lessened... Um, your interest going into it. Not just for The Witcher, but just for overall. Because I don't think the story we had in Series 2 really gripped you enough to think, okay, this one plot could stretch amongst, what was it, eight episodes. I mean, I love the first episode of this series. I mean, when Witcher and Siri went to this dude's lair and he was cursed as this monster. You have to forgive me. <laughs> Forget names. like Stuff like this and... Game of Thrones and all that, the names are just like go beyond you easily. Um, but yeah, when I went to his um, mansion and you had the vampire woman and they had this love, like sick, sick ass love relationship. And um, you find out he was cursed because uh, he raped that woman. Um, I thought that little singular story and what were they were doing. And the vampire lady was trying to taunt Siri as well, like saying, don't trust him. Which actually, come to think about, they didn't actually go anywhere with that, did they? <laughs> I expected them to go somewhere where we were like, okay, is Siri not going to trust the Witcher at all? Because they are just getting to know each other at this point. And then if Geralt proves himself enough, then it'll be a stronger unit. But they were pretty much a strong unit from the get-go. But yeah, the first episode, I really thought was brilliant it reminded me of season one of the different st singular stories um per episode and uh yeah it was just a shame that it didn't like see episode two it didn't go the same sort of way because it started off so strong and then we uh, began stretching off different storylines like with the elves and Nilfgaard that was like such a large chunk of this series what was going on there and it wasn't too... Like, I did find it was all right. I did enjoy it. I enjoyed it more when it was starting to get to the point of it. When we started seeing Fringilla and... Was it Tenes, the leader of the elves? Like having their little friction. And it's like, oh God, this friendship's going to... Like they're going to turn on each other at some point. But it took a large part of the series, this sort of truce they had. And it wasn't near interesting enough to grip you throughout the series. So I thought that was pretty dragged out. And that was one of the signs that told you, okay, we're kind of deviating what makes this show sort of good, at least in my eyes. Another part of the show that I really enjoyed in this uh, series was uh, Siri herself, um, her growth, um, how she was going through that obstacle course. I mean, I don't know how, what took her so long to get through. You know, they had these swinging batarangs in like a part of this obstacle course as a part of her training. And she just kept getting hit by them. It's like, I'm sure any one of us could easily get past that bit. <laughs> it was the obstacle after that with these sharp knives going by that made it a bit... Um, that was the challenging part. Like, holy shit, how are you going to get past that? But anyway, Siri was um, probably the biggest highlight of this show. Aside from Geralt, obviously. 
and him being a badass. I mean, Siri was learning her place in the world. She was coming to grips with what she's lost, um, the monsters that she's created. And of course, she was uh, training and Geralt was first just going to hide her away, but then learn after the Witcher Fortress was attacked that he was going to help train her. So that was a nice little story there. Um, but yeah, and then you had Yen there was times where Yennefer was uh, training Ciri to use her powers. And it's just like, I like the steady growth here of Ciri. She didn't become too powerful straight away or anything like that. She's still like on her way. And I like the steadiness of that. So I, I thought her character was miles better than it was in the first series easily. When they first got to the uh, Witcher lair, I, I was kind of disappointed in the fact that I thought maybe you could have like a, I don't know, a teasing friendly Witcher fight. You could have Geralt fight, fighting one or two guys and you could see what fellow Witchers, their fighting styles are like. And that would be a pretty cool intro to it like a bit more bang wow like these are what these witches are really about but no it's more like just hey how's it going guys you're right hugs and all that stuff um i would have to say this series didn't do the witcher lair too much justice <laughs> i mean this lair was attacked about like two or three times and um either they weren't there like it was either Geralt or his um, mentor. What was his mentor's name again? I can't remember. Uh, what was it? Vesemir, that's it. Vesemir, Vesemir. Um, him, Geralt's uh, trainer or teacher. Is either them two fighting the monsters on their lonesome and you're wondering where are the rest of the witches? Or the rest of the witches are just getting their ass kicked. I mean, in the last episode, there was this huge fight with these big snake basilisk with leg creatures and a lot of them were getting thrashed and it's like these are monster hunters hardly any of them should be dying at this point it's like one witcher alone should be able to kick ass let alone the whole fortress of them so i thought they were done pretty dirty in this <laughs> to be honest you only care about Geralt and vesemir to be honest and um, the others maybe a couple of others but to, like I don't think they um, truly reflected on how badass witches are. And this was the series to really show what the witches were all about, like their ideology, their beliefs, what they get into, um, what makes them like as uh, emotionless as they are and how as powerful as they are. We could have dived into a lot with that, but I, I feel like we didn't even tip the surface with it. It was more like, just seeing how they're doing every now and again. And when we need them to fight, we need them to fight. So if they do go forward with a season three, I would like to see more of that stuff and maybe tapping more into the actual Witcher lore, which ties in with my point of getting to know Geralt more and what he's all about and just what got him into this sort of um, environment and why he's um, decided to cho choose the path of a Witcher and gone the way he has. Now, I believe uh, I mentioned before there's Eskel, who's a fan favorite from the books, but he was introduced in episode two and he died in episode two. He got poisoned by a Leshy, which is like a big tree like monster. Um, he didn't realize this makes the witches look even more stupid. He got poisoned by a Leshy, he doesn't look too good. He's just getting worse and worse. He seems out of it. He's not being himself, judging by the reactions of the other witches. He transforms into this big leshy himself, and none of the witches even realized it until it was too late. He was just rummaging around in, I think they're like their armory or their potions room or something. And it's just like, man, these guys aren't as good as you think they are, <laughs> judging by this. But to back to my original point, the fans... They say that Eskel is a huge character in the books. They say he's he becomes like the leader of the witches or something like that. He become he does a lot of heroic stuff. He's like large in these books. So for him to be a one and done show in season two just to get poisoned by a monster, and then um, Geralt has to kill him with his flaming sword. Um, that really like if I was a fan, I would be pissed. Like, imagine being such a fan of a franchise. A legacy character has just been introduced and they just killed straight like that, done dirty. I'd be pissed. 
So obviously he didn't hit me that much because I didn't know him, but I could imagine, like I feel for the fans of Eskul, that that is a big hit right there, and they should have done better than that. I mean, their main, the main writer um, who runs the show, uh, is it Lauren? I think her name's Lauren. I think I remember seeing that they, she was justifying that they did this to move the plot so Geralt realises he needs to train Ciri because they had a, a Leshy roaming around in the Witcher Fortress so he realises nowhere is safe and Geralt decides to train Ciri in case of any situation which is incredibly dumb. <laughs> if you have to do certain things such as killing off big characters just to move a particular plot forward i don't think you're writing correctly there is a bazillion ways you could do stuff and i don't think resorting to stuff like killing fan favorites is the best way to move forward i mean i've heard from fans there's been a number of situations where characters have been either killed off or they're introducing new characters you've never heard of and i don't know why they're deviating off the path of the source material because i hear the source material was very close to season one. And look, it came out brilliant. But you deviate from the source material in season two and go off doing your own thing. And it just, you don't feel it as much. It doesn't come out as well as the first season. So I don't know why Netflix does that, why they have to interfere with um, already great material. Because unless the stuff you're coming up with is as equally as good or better... <laughs> which you can never be sure of but if you're confident that you've got something to tell and it's really good then go for it but if there's any sort of doubt don't because everyone loves the source material as is they already love what you've got going don't mess with it go with the flow embrace it <laughs> just enjoy what you've got and just make it as appealing on the screen as possible the stuff I really enjoyed about this show, um, Geralt was brilliant, Ciri was brilliant, all the monster fights I loved. The Ciri mind trips were really good. There were two instances, one where we're, she was with Triss and another at the end where she was in her own head having these sort of wigged out hallucinations. This was while she was being possessed by the deathless mother. And I really liked those, they were really enjoyable. I liked um, what she was going through there. Um, like I said, I enjoyed Yennefer's training of Siri. The production and the CGI are both brilliant. Um, I liked Yennefer's little betrayal there, like she wanted to get Siri's power to regain hers. I liked Siri's sort of quandary on whether she wanted to become a Witcher. I thought that was really good. Um, there was a weird thing with the Witcher potion sort of deal. She wanted to inject herself with the potion and that which is fine, which is good, but then suddenly the fire fucker, this um, assassin dude who, I think he just popped out of nowhere in the Witcher fortress to take the potion. By the way, not so much like security in this place, is there? <laughs> Some kind of fortress. Anyone can just teleport in there and do whatever they want. But um, he took the vial and the assassin fire fucker had a, this um, accomplice who hired him, who got him out of jail. And she put the potion on her face and it burnt her like to like no end. She was scarred. She looked horrific with what that stuff did to her. Because this potion was made from Ciri's blood. So you can tell it's all kind of like heinous dark magic and it did a number on her. But I just don't know where they went with that. Are they going to still hold on to that potion? And I forget how it ended. Did they mention they still had? They were going to do stuff with the potion? I don't know. It was a weird tread where they were going with that. I I would have rather than Yesimir hold on to that potion and see his sort of quandary on whether to make new witches or not. Because he was quite conflicted on whether to revive the witcher race or not. Which is a shame because um, it's one of those things that started off well but may have trailed off into like non-interesting territory. I both liked... And hated Roach dying. I liked the fact that we got a real emotional moment and they showed respect for the Roach character on how Geralt went about it. The show didn't want to give Roach a proper goodbye or funeral or anything like that. But Henry Cavill was adamant they do that. The big fan he is because he knows how much the Roach character would mean to anyone who's a fan of The Witcher. So that just says another thing about the runners of this show that they're not totally devoted to what the witch is about and the source material they're too busy doing their own thing 
I feel like having some sort of tribute for Roach was the right thing to do and it, it was respectful and it's just this is why I think Henry needs to run the show a bit more because he's got Witcher in his blood and he wants to show everything good and uh, bring out the best that he, he knows and his fandom putting that into the show but yeah I both liked and hated Roach's death um there I like this how they showed respect to the Roach character in his death but then he died <laughs> I mean I think people say that he just keeps getting numerous horses and just keeps calling them Roach anyway <laughs> but I guess for that first death that first goodbye to Roach they did all right and maybe they wanted to get that out of the way early um, before it becomes too unrealistic. Like, wow, how is this horse surviving everything? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I thought they did um, all right by Roach. It's just um, seeing him die. It's like, no. But when Roach 5 dies, then you'll be like, well, another one gone. Roach 6, please. Roach 6. <laughs> so the poor writing elements of this show. Um, I already mentioned... Um, about the witches not looking as powerful as they could but you know they should be written better than that I bet they w w are written way better in the books um, the fact that they missed Eskel that they didn't notice anything was wrong with him was just daft um, the, there's a moment where Yennefer is back in the fortress where she was trained and Stregobor goes into her head. I mean, Stregobor's leading this whole thing of not to trust her, but she took out this whole new guardian army in the last season. It's just like, how can you not trust her after that? <laughs> so it's just stupid about where they're going with this and where, why she would be a threat after all she's done for them. So that's dumb. Um, Yennefer frees Kahir here for no reason I mean I don't know why she did that after what he's done he's an enemy um, I guess plot wise she needed him to lead her to somewhere safe um, they were going to Nilfgaard I believe but they split up anyway and Yennefer didn't know if he could help her um, if he could help her after leaving so I, I don't know what was the point of that was um, there was an, the ending with the witches um, the whole good guy group taking the deathless mother out of Siri. It was like a, it was so tropey and corny. It was like no hate, the power of love that will win over all family. It's just like, oh, it's so cringy. I hate it when they do stuff like that. They use that to get the witches, um, the deathless mother out. But it's just like, I thought they could have done it way better. I mean, Yennefer could have done some spell to drag her out, but, uh, it's just like, oh, so cringy. <laughs> yeah, I like the Deathless Mother bit. And when she possessed Siri and that, and she got Siri like, okay, let's see how powerful she is now. And Siri like was screaming shards at the witches and they were shielding themselves. And then she revealed like there was a monolisk, you know, one, one of those monoliths behind like this ancient tree that the witches go to to hang their dead fellow witches necklaces. It's like, damn, how long was that monolith there behind that tree? <laughs> this is really like, how did none of them know this? Now, I did enjoy the Deathless Mother storyline. I thought that was pretty cool. Like, she was in the minds of these three women, Yennefer, Fringilla, and Francesca. Like, they all had their own separate desires. Fringilla, I think she wanted to rule. Francesca, I think she wanted a baby. And Yennefer wanted her powers back. So I like the idea of that and the deathless mother like feasting. Like it's a trick essentially. She just wants them to suffer so she could feast on their misery just to get out. Yeah, I like this, um, where they were going with that and Witcher saying, like giving a bit of background to her, like the witches, like they trapped her in that hut. Um, and then it revealed the deathless mother. Was she a member of the wild hunt? I was a bit lost there. Like at the end, once they got the deathless mother out of Siri. Geralt, Siri, and Yennefer ended up in this other plane where we saw the wild hunt chasing after, like, coming after them. And then the Deathless Mother spirit, like, mer like transformed into one of the warriors in the wild hunt. So was she a member of the wild hunt? I don't know. Maybe one of you guys can tell me in the comments. I don't know. Um, but yeah, that was a, a pretty cool storyline. Um, tragic for Francesca losing her baby there. 
but then she becomes an arsehole herself and she murdered like like a bunch of babies herself in revenge it's like i think she burnt them alive it's like jesus well you've gone full rogue evil ain't you it's like no justifying that jesus and Fr i liked fringilla's storyline um if you were to like ask me to take elements out of the story so we could focus more on like Geralt and like more interesting stuff about the Witcher universe, I would take Fring uh, Fringilla and Frances Francesca out of it. Um, but from what we got, I did enjoy the Fringilla storyline. I mean, I like that moment when she froze all the Nilfgaardian war uh, the Nilfgaardian soldiers and killed every one of them, like stabbing them slowly in the eye and shit. It's like. Damn, <laughs> that was pretty badass. I did like Fringilla's uh, like quandary, more quandary of whether she could go through with being like a uh, taking control um, and being like a you know able to authoritize the decision she made with like sheltering the elves under Nilfgaard. Um, Yennefer, I did not like her storyline too much i really enjoyed her character in the first series but i didn't enjoy her in this series um i mean there are elements to it she was better when she met up with Geralt and siri i liked her from that point on but before that she was just a bit i don't know whiny um always just trying to act like she's the best of the ball like always got a smart quip always got some trick up her sleeve or something like that when really this storyline with her losing her powers was the perfect opportunity to sort of like bring out some vulnerability in her. They did that amazingly in the first season and they could have done it with this one where she could have learnt to do like just the basic stuff without magic. Sort of like the stuff she usually relies on with her magic she could do herself and she could have an arc where she's just suffering, she doesn't know what to do, she doesn't, she can't find her place. Maybe she befriends someone and then learns slowly that she doesn't need magic. And then, of course, in the story comes the point where she has the opportunity to gain it again. I don't think they stress too much on how vulnerable she was um, in this series. I mean, there was one moment she was trying to help this woman being trapped in a cage. And just like, you wanting to be a superhero isn't really resonating with me. It doesn't feel relatable. You, like your basic necessities of who you are as a person relying on magic, that feels a lot more appealing to me rather than you trying to help others. The more selfish aspect on how what it does for you is the more interesting part to that story. So that was very unfortunate. I thought that was a large um, misstep on what they did with her. Did they do that in the stories in the books? I don't know, maybe. So maybe I just missed uh, the point of that. Maybe um, it was done better in the books. I don't know. But I don't think Yennefer was too good in this series. I mean, the first episode was great, but then there was a dry spot in this series. I think it was episodes two, three, maybe four, where it was like just Yennefer popping from place to place, finding somewhere to go. You know, Witcher doing a little digging on what's going on behind the monsters. A lot of talk with the Nilfgaardians and the elves. It was like, it was very dry at that point. <laughs> it picked up more... I think episode five or six onwards. I mean, it was even after the series finished, I was like, oh, I'm pumped for season three. But then on retrospect, when I thought back on it, it's like there was a lot of moments there where it was quite like dry and unappealing. I mean, this show isn't the worst you've ever seen. It's not like Dexter season eight. <laughs> it's not that bad. So you can't say it's terrible. It's just it's boring in some elements. But then the good stuff, when it hit, when it's good, it is good. And you're just waiting for those good moments. And you're just waiting for it to, like, pick up. I mean, it's weird how it started off so strong, but then had this dry period. And Yennefer was just um, one of those elements where it was just sort of like, okay, what are we doing here? Are we going to move this plot along a bit? Otherwise, I could just be spending my time with Geralt and Ciri right now, just seeing what they're doing. Some training episodes, hunt down some monsters, train Ciri to fight some monsters. That would be some really cool, interesting stuff. Have some flashbacks of Geralt while this is happening, so you could have some resonation between what Geralt learnt and what Ciri learnt. It's like, oh, the more I think about it, the more I want that to be the, <laughs> the crux of the show. But um, we had to deal with what we got, I guess. I didn't like Askir in this series. He was very, like... He's playing the broody, sarcastic, grunty character. 
and you can pull that off very well but for him in this series it just didn't hit with me he was much better in the last series i don't know what it was i just he wasn't he didn't grip me with the humor his asshole ways just wasn't very entertaining for me. he was just more like dude shut up <laughs> can we just move forward with this it's like i don't know so yeah i didn't think he was very good in this um they had a weird point in the show where he was fighting with this guy querying about his lyrics in his songs like i don't know where they were going with that i know it's just a distraction for yennefer and that to get on the ship but he was already distracting anyway some people said it was um the writer telling the audience that if like a bit of a jab at the audience if you didn't get the first series time jumps the confusing elements of it I, don't, I can't confirm if that's true or not. If it's true, then that's pretty, like, petty. If it's not true, then I just thought this was just a weirdly placed scene. Very odd. Um, another weird thing was the elves pl pledging their allegiance to Nilfgaard, but as soon as Francesca had a baby, then they decided to leave. It's just, like, you know what Nilfgaard are about, and you know what he was instigating with this truce, uh, this truce between Fringilla and Francesca. So I don't know why um, they thought, oh, well, we had a baby, we can just walk out of here, no problem. See you later, no issues. <laughs> like, no, there's going to be consequences to this. Like, And the way Fringilla's character went, she weren't having it whatsoever, no. Another sort of dry storyline was, which was just in a single episode, but still... Askia being captured by the firefucker and then Yennefer saving him. Anything to do with the firefucker? I mean, he had his goons fighting Geralt in that one scene, which is really badass, by the way. But he, firefucker just seems like one of those things I would have taken out of the story. You could reduce this series by like three episodes and you probably get all the good stuff in there and tell a good cohesive story. You'll have to forgive me on not remembering the names of the monsters. The Leshy Vampire Lady... There's a second Leshy, but then that was destroyed by this big centipede thing. Uh, there was a rock dragony thing um, summoned as soon as Siri screamed. Um, the basilisk crawly things. They had some good monsters in this. All the monster fighting elements were fantastic, and it really like anything to do with Geralt fighting monsters. I love. Um, it, it's you can't really say you want more of it in the sense you did get a good chunk of it in the show but you still want more <laughs> maybe this is what ties into what i was saying that you should have more separate stories and then you feel there's more integrated into these monsters because there's stories backing them that's what i like kind of mean when you want more put into them so siri had visions of her family being reunited with her family but it was just a trick by the deathless mother and she saw her father and then the big reveal at the end of the show was her father was the what they call it the white flame the leader of the North guardians the big bad essentially of the whole show which is pretty cool reveal i like that i'm thinking oh this is a good element right here because Geralt was saying how did new know everything about siri and that makes sense i don't know if it's in the books i don't know if we're trailing off from the books um at the moment i think it'd be a pretty cool aspect although i don't see him lasting long i mean he's just a man <laughs> I mean, even Fringilla could probably kill him then and there in that last scene. I mean, how is he getting away with this for as long as he does? I mean, monsters, witches, mages, surely he's not going to last too long in this. But we'll see where it goes. Maybe there's more to him than meets the eye. But yeah, that was a pretty cool element. I like that uh, sort of mic drop. It was weird because when me and my wife were watching, I don't know why, we thought there was more episodes in this series than there was. So when they did that, big reveal it was like okay let's watch the next episode see where we go oh that was the end where's season three <laughs> so there was an element of that of why i was like pumped for season three after this but it took a lot of reflection on the whole series overall and how i felt about it now some people um <laughs> they there has been some complaints of wokeness in this Knowing Netflix, they do add this sort of stuff to their shows, so I wouldn't be surprised. But it's sometimes hard to tell with shows if that was what it was, or if they were, if they were really going for something. So it's hard to say. But I could see examples of it. There was a scene where a guy was asking Yennefer if she should be working, and she kicks the guy in the balls. Um, there was a like these witches, or particularly one witcher, just 
egging on Siri endlessly for being a girly girl. It's like, oh gosh, here we go. Fringilla being told she should know her place, which ironically was the mo like the tying decisive moment before she just wiped out those Nilf Nilf Guardians. Um, I mean, some people say about Nil Fringilla and Nike being race swapped. Uh, I can't neither comment or confirm that I don't know the books or the games. And plus, the books, the games, and the show are three completely en different entities from themselves. So it, it it could just be because they just wanted to play like they found good actresses for those. And then uh, some people were mentioning about the elves plot line about saying like this resonates with like race and that and discrimination that sort of thing. Again, I can't confirm that. Maybe they really do this storyline in the books and do it better but it's hard to give netflix the benefit of the doubt because they do this stuff a lot so they're, they're like always trying to put sneaky stuff in there and then you see these articles or interviews and that that like that's what they're trying to do so i wouldn't be surprised if that was all part of an agenda feel thing if that is what they were fully doing it's like jesus please drop it if not then i guess that's just what they were going for and maybe a lot of it didn't land as well as it did and in these times, things can easily get misread. So it's better. that's why it's better to just stay away from it completely. Because <laughs> even if you don't mean to do it, it could be read that way because these are sort of tense times right now. So um, yeah, you got to be careful with that sort of stuff. I really like Yennefer, Geralt and Ciri all like working together, like whether individually as pairs or, or as a trio together. Um, Yennefer and Geralt are always great. And uh, I like what Siri and Yennefer were doing. And I could just follow Geralt and Siri all day and just watch him train her. And um, that was the highlight of the show for me. And of course, the monster hunting. Just give me more Geralt, more Geralt, and uh, I'll be happy. So what did I think of this series overall? I mean, the first episode, it started off so strong. The last couple of episodes, I thought it ended pretty darn strong as well. Um even five and six were good it's just there was a middling part there that was quite dry and you could definitely compare it to the first season that there was like definite missteps here and where they fix mistakes from the first series like the confusing timelines and getting to know siri and stuff like that there was other elements that have gone downhill like various intriguing um plot lines where it just sort of even been dragged out or removed in exchange for storylines that you don't really care about. Um, namely stuff like Yennefer and Askia just popping around everywhere, not knowing where they're going. The elves and the Nilf guardians, the firefucker stuff. Um, yeah, there was quite a few elements that was really dragging this show. And like I said, if you took a few sh episodes out of it and bundled a lot of the good stuff in there. I think you'd have more of a cohesive series. Five episodes probably would have done this fine if this is the material you had to work with. I would recommend that the showrunners go with Henry Moore because he's a lot much bigger fan of the show and he's feeling the heartbeat of what makes it tick. So he should definitely be running it a lot more. Um, but yeah, like I said, Geralt and Ciri was um, the highlight of the show for me. The monster fights... Um, there's a few storylines that really stuck out to me and others that just dragged. Uh, the first series was much better and it, it felt a lot more exciting there. This doesn't feel as exciting. I mean, it ended with everyone wanting Siri, so uh, Geralt, Siri, and Yennefer are probably going to have their work cut out for them, bumping into all kinds of forces, so that can be exciting. Um, but other than that, uh, they need to work on it more to like just work on the exciting elements and just stick more to the source material because you know the source material works. It's worked in the books and the games. You have enough proof of that. So you have plenty to work with and just uh, stick with that in the show. Um, and that will be your guiding force right there. <laughs> so I would score this show a 7 out of 10. I think a 7 out of 10 is fair. Go back to the first series, see what made it strong, work on the things you did wrong in the second series, and this could be like one of the best shows on TV right now. I am still interested in season three. We'll have to see if there is a season three first. We'll have to see um, if the reception was good enough for season two. Um, but you know how it is. Season one's really good, so it makes people come back for season two. And whether it was good or not, you had that viewership there because of season one. So <laughs> they're going to make a season three, probably. Um, but yeah, it just, I might play uh, the Witcher 3 Wild Hunt soon and get more of a feel of what 
could be the best side of which because everyone goes on of how amazing that a game that is for sure um but yeah that was my review for witcher season two a seven out of ten feels about right there good wiggle room there to boost it and for the love of god just more Geralt just give us more Geralt and I'll be happy for sure I'm even tempted to dress as a Geralt for a comic con or something like that I don't usually go to comic cons but if I were and I was to dress up that's one to go for that or an assassin creed assassin yeah those are the ones right there uh, but yeah thank you very much for watching guys I really appreciate it I hope you um, have a great day thank you for listening throughout this if you've reached the end um, if you did good on you <laughs> really appreciate it any support would be great like comments and subscribe that would be awesome and until next time i'll see all you legends later see ya